Hi dear doctors, I am Dr. Nabil Pakhtin, trainer of clinical cardiology and lecturer of cardiology in Kabul, Afghanistan. Our web blog is afghanheart.wordpress.com. Our today article is about QF without myocardial infarction. It is a very challenging case in the routine practices. That's all doctors experiencing uh, it in emergency department and coronary care units. As uh, we know already, the Q wave is uh, possible to produce by myocardial infarction. But uh, new researches and clinical data are showing that uh, Q wave is also possible by some other physiological and pathological states that uh, could be po uh, occur during the uh, other states rather than myocardial infarction. By definition, uh, at first we should tell you that um, a Q wave is the first negative deflection on a uh, electrocardiogram. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, there is uh, three positive deflection: P wave, R wave, and T wave, and two negative deflection: Q wave and S wave. By this uh, definition, the first or initial negative deflection is Q wave. But uh, as mechanism uh, is easily uh, shown here in this diagram, every action potential has three vectors, uh, especially depolarization in the ventricles. First vector is uh, called the septum vector, that is uh, starting from left side of the heart to the right side of the heart, going from left to heart uh, to the right, uh, crossing the septum, interventricular septum. The second one is the uh, R wave vector uh, that is going uh, uh, from uh, upper part of the heart to the apex of the heart from left uh, from right to the left and it is responsible for R wave. And the third vector is uh, moving from apex of the heart to the base of the heart and it is responsible for S wave. The first uh, vector of depolarization is the Q wave vector uh, according to vectorocardiography as soon as the vector front moving away from question leads uh, position pole of the electrode it will produce the negative deflection as you see here uh, if we suppose the uh, lead one and our lateral leads that is uh, the place in the left uh, part of the body the septal first septal vector is uh, moving away from this and will produce the Q wave and Q wave is uh, the result of this um, uh, septal vector front that is going away from that. As you see here, the uh, R wave vector coming to the uh, positive pole of this leads and will produce the positive deflection of R wave. Uh, we can tell you that um, during the action potential, thousands of vectors can be produced, but uh, vectors in op opposite uh, sides will decrease their amplitudes and minus each other and vector in uh, the same side will augment the sum of each other and vectors that is um, uh, vertical to each other and 90 degree also will uh, augment the resultant vector of that due to this we will tell the QF is the first negative deflection of the electrocardiogram by the first uh, septal vector that is going away from question leads Thus, a QF indicate that the net direction of the early ventricular depolarization force oriented away from the positive axis of the lead in question by more than 90 degrees. Although prominent QF are a characteristic finding in myocardial infarction, they can also be seen in number of an infarct setting. Failure to appreciate the other cause of QF can lead to important diagnostic errors. Uh, we will uh, see here in this diagram normally this interventricular septum is very thin and the septal vector first vector of the polarization of the ventricle is that's responsible for producing of the Q wave as shown here in the uh, right side of this screen that's showing um, uh, it is producing by first septal vector uh, first septal vector is uh, small normally and a small vector is a representative of small uh, myocardial thickness and small action potential duration. Uh, according to uh, general 
ventricular uh, cardiography rules the uh, vector is uh, indicator of two things thickness of myocardium and duration of act action potential as soon as the vector length is shortened it is representative of uh, th uh, thin the myocardium and short action potential that is normally here will show you a small q wave that's the result of a small uh, myocardium and short action potential but during the pathologic areas when the septum is hypertrophied the, the resultant vector will be pro pro prolonged that we will tell you later and then produce uh, abnormal q wave by def definition a normal q wave is uh, 0.03 seconds are uh, lesser than one millimeter in the width and does not exceed 25 percent of the r wave in this uh, same lead as you see here the this uh, q wave is uh, very uh, small and duration it is lesser than one small box in the width and it is depth is not 25 percent of relevant r wave in the same lead as you see here in the uh, below image you will see the q wave is uh, time is prolonged more than one small box uh, and it is uh, depth is more than 25 percent of relevant r wave due to that it is abnormal and normal abnormal differentiation is according to this as you see in this image we will uh, see um, three uh, areas the first is the black area in between it is uh, indicator of necrotic zoom the two purple zone that is beside of this necrotic zone is the injury area and the two uh, gray zone beside of this is indicator of ischemic area the necrotic area is lacking of any action potential any charges and thus it is working as a window it is working as a window for lead that is uh, occur uh, are localized on the surface of that and this lead will uh, record uh, the opposite size action potential via this empty window and it will uh, record the resultant very powerful um, vector of opposite side of this area because this area is lacking of any charges and this uh, and compensate of this its charges is uh, augmented by opposite sides and all charges of the intra ventricular uh, potential and septal potential is recorded here and will produce a very exaggerating q wave that is more than one small box in the duration and at its depth is more than 25 percent of relevant r wave this is the mechanism of uh, q wave and myocardial infarction that's called current mechanism of injury but uh, an other setting that is our today issue is uh, article is about q wave producing by physiological and positional effects as we see in this diagram more than one decade uh, the name of non qfmi and qfmi is replaced by st elevation myocardial infarction and non st myocardial infarction traditionally uh, they stated that uh, q wave myocardial infarction must be with q wave in the ecg and non q wave myocardial infarction must be with non q wave in the ecg but uh, n new data and research shows that um, uh, an st elevation myocardial infarction minority of cases will, will be possible to have non q wave and a non st elevation myocardial infarction minority of cases uh, can be uh, with q wave mi due to that st elevation mi and non st elevation mi is replaced rather than non q wave mi and q wave mi non uh, infarction q wave concept uh, is uh, showing that uh, a Q wave is uh, not necessary to, pr to be produced by a specific electrophysiological mechanism or pathology. There is no need for any electrophysiological mechanism to produce Q wave. It can be possible to, to be produced normally. Due to that, four mechanisms is responsible for producing these Q waves. W the first mechanism is physiological and positional effects. This is uh, physiological uh, manners and positional ef uh, body effects that's uh, easy to produce QF. The second mechanism is myocardial injury and replacement that we will tell later. The uh, third mechanism is ventricular enlargement. Not only ventricular but any chamber enlargement or hypertrophy is responsible for producing QF. An altered uh, ventricular conduction is also possible to produce QF. Due to that new concept should be uh, uh, remind us that QF is not only possible by myocardial infarction. 
So, uh, briefly, we will uh, pointing the uh, four mechanism of my uh, Q wave and uh, without myocardial infarction, physiological or positional effects will produce normal variant septal Q waves, normal variant Q waves, and the least V two, V one, E V L, V three, and V F. Left pneumothorax and dextrocardia. That is a physiological or uh, positional states that uh, also po uh, possible to produce loss of lateral R wave progression. You should remember. Uh, we will tell you later that the R wave prog uh, poor R is an um, uh, indicator of two things. One, once the R become poor, it is an um, indicator of that uh, it is relevant, a Q wave will be exaggerated. And the secondly, any R wave is not an indicator of any uh, physiological states. It's, uh, uh, poor R wave is uh, uh, indirectly representing any uh, a Q wave that is uh, indicator of uh, sub endocardial infarction or sub epicardial infarction, we will tell you later. As, uh, as we tell, uh, like this, um, it is possible to produce loss of uh, R wave progression by normal states also. Myocardial injury and uh, infiltration, like uh, acute process and chronic process, and acute ischemic infarction, myocarditis, hyperkalemia, and in chronic process, myocardial infarction, idiopathic uh, cardiomyopathies, myocarditis, amyloidosis, tumors, sarcoidosis, scleroderm, chigas disease, and econococcus cysts. And ventricular hypertrophy, either right ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy, and septal uh, hypertrophy due to obstructive hypertrophy cardiomyopathy will produce poor R progression due to clockwise and counterclockwise rotation of the heart. In conduction abnormality, left bandar branch block, WPW syndrome, left anterior hem blocks also pr produce poor R progression, that is rather uh, another mechanism than uh, the myocardial infarction. As we see in this diagram, we will uh, clear today the concept of poor R. What's poor R? Everyone telling the, uh, in a day, uh, daily practice uh, poor R progression or lack of uh, R progression. Uh, once we see here in the normal myocardium, the uh, normal vector of the R wave is very intact. And in normal myocardium, the depolarization occurring very systematically uh, from subendocard to sub epicard and as this vector is very intact and produce very normal R wave here. As once some ischemic injury or infarction occurring in the sub endocard or sub epicard, the place of uh, normal vector is decreasing and producing smaller R wave uh, than expected normal R wave here. Due to that, as soon as the necrotic area is increasing, the uh, height of R wave decrease and the Q wave uh, depth is uh, increasing. As you see here, the necrotic area increase, the normal R wave uh, vector decrease, and the R wave and electrocardiogram decreasing, Q wave is increasing by two mechanisms. One mechanism is that the normal R wave vector places uh, short uh, decreased, and the Q wave window window of current of injury that will uh, will be a window for record of um, that lead will be increased and the totally necrotic area it is working as a window here and this total window is lacking of any normal r wave and due to that producing qs wave and this area is also sub endocardial area uh, and the same in, uh, of others will produce r wave this is the mechanism of r wave uh, poor r progression once someone tell you there is some poor r progression we will remind that um, it means some injury ischemia or necrosis in the sub endocardium or sub epicardium that's taking the normal places but uh, poor r wave also possible some but some uh, by some other mechanism but our today's issue is focused on that we will tell you in the next slides non infarction q waves is possible to be produced by transient or permanent states and transient states Already, we we know that uh, permanent states will produce Q wave. Q wave is the uh, sign of chronic ischemia or injury or myocardial uh, uh, scars that will not be uh, reversible. But uh, in uh, newly research and clinical data are showing that uh, loss of uh, acutely electrophysiological function by ischemia or injury will produce a Q wave that is uh, re reversible this phenomenon called by the name of myocardial concussion 
as we have my uh, confusion in the brain that this confusion is produced by uh, transiently um, uh, interruption of the blood and oxygen in the ischemic area as soon as the blood uh, supplied again this uh, transient QF will uh, return to normal and this this is the new concept of myocardial concussion also transiently QFs possible by metabolic disturbances shocks pancreatitis cardiac surgery uh, and transient ischemia hypoxia coronary spasms localized metabolic and electrolyte disp disturbances possibly by hypothermia and rarely you should re re remember that a QF transiently but also possible in acute uh, tachycardia episodes also QFs by myocarditis eats cardiac amyloidosis, neuromuscular disorders such as progressive myocardial dystrophy, myocardial at, uh, myotonia atrophica, fredricin ataxia, scleroderm, postpartum myopathy, myocardial replacement by tumor, sarcoidosis, idiopathic cardiomyopathy, anomalous coronary artery and coronary embolism. As we see here, uh, I told you before that uh, the septum uh, and the idiopathic uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy of ventricle is uh, thickened. And the normal action potential uh, time is uh, prolonged, and the, this second uh, is indicator of second uh, prolonged uh, vectors. Our prolonged vectors is indicator of thick uh, myocardium and uh, prolonged action potential, and will produce the uh, deep uh, QF and um, uh, weathered uh, QF. That is uh, just during the uh, any thickness in the myocardium and hypertrophy. Just the first vector is not um, changed. The second vector, third vector, and even vector of repolarization also changing and producing the deep S wave and um, uh, big R wave. That is an inferior uh, simulating in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. They are simulate the anterior or inferior myocardial infarction, especially when a patient come with a complaint of chest pain. You should not mistake by myocardial infarction uh, one another very f uh, famous uh, disease called our gold global uh, obstructive lung disease cpd especially emphysema and chronic bronchitis uh, severe pulmonary hypertension and uh, pulmonary embolism will produce q waves um, and due to two mechanism one is uh, the clockwise or counterclockwise rotation due to right uh, atrium or ventricular hypertrophy and secondly once uh, during the this episodes the diaphragm flattened and the car uh, the heart that is located on that come down and uh, all normal vectors that was uh, the normal vector front was uh, toward the um, uh, question leads coming down and those leads recording the tail of that vectors and producing q waves and change the change of that and will produce inferior myocardial infarction like inferior myocardial infarction and should not be mistaken with that this is very normal and if um, as soon way we position the uh, uh, question lead uh, to the downside uh, especially in the fourth intercostal spaces that will be recorded very well as you see here in lead mm, uh, 3 and lead EVF we have QAS uh, waves and uh, it is due to right atrial uh, enlargement and right ventricular enlargement and um, it should not be, be mistaken for myocardial infarction it mimic inferior myocardial infarction however the coroner is intact by complement complementary exams when any chamber enlarges it can uh, brings near the chest wall and near to the electrode and the electrode uh, will record the uh, intra uh, pot uh, cavity potential as a Q waves and left ventricular hypertrophy uh, the leads uh, left side of the heart uh, nearing to the chest wall and V5 and V6 that is left uh, precarder um, leads will record the Q waves and augmented potential uh, it should not be mistake for left uh, lateral wall infarction and also during the right ventricular uh, hypertrophy or enlargement um, that is um, the right side of the heart is very uh, difficult chamber to understand it's located just anterior below the sternum and inferior and posterior aspect of the right ventricular uh, right ventricular is 
facing the diaphragmatic surface and lead v1 is just locating on the uh, upper part of the right ventricle any hypertrophy brain get near to the chest wall and uh, those right sided precardial leads like v1 and v2 is recording the intracavity potential of that and producing qr qs or big r that should not be mistaken for uh, myocardial infarction of anterior wall or inferior wall as you see here qs and the lead uh, 2 and avf is there and uh, patient coming with chest pain mm, uh, this is a case of COPD exacerbation with gross right atrial and right ventricular enlargement does mimic an inferior my wall myocardial infarction but uh, the trainee is mistaking it that as a myocardial infarction once on call informed after complementary exams the coronary was intact and this patient uh, ECG change was due to COPD due to uh, gross right atrium and right ventricular enlargement One more differential diagnosis of inferior my, uh, MI and ECG exists. A grossly dilated uh, right atrium, right ventricular, uh, due to COPD with severe pulmonary hypertension, possible to produce those, those changes of potential and produce and mimicking some anterior and inferior myocardial infarction. Uh, spontaneous pneumothorax, particular on the left uh, side, may result in pattern of simulating anterior myocardial infarction with occasionally uh, absence of R wave in the all the precardial leads as you see here at pushing the hearts and the normal uh, uh, vectors changing and producing some change in the r wave and qf and the left ventricular hypertrophy you should remember that mm, there is failure to record r wave in the lead to v1 to v4 uh, uh, and suggest under receptor myocardial infections merely i told you before that um, any change in the depolarization vectors also have change in the depolarization vector also because the, the uh, depolarization r with depolarization vector is in the same direction as uh, depolarization vector of st segment or t wave segments due to that we should not uh, mistakes during the pressure or volume overload of left ventricle as a myocardial infarction as you see here during the left ventricular hypertrophy, we have uh, QS and lead V1, V2, and V3, um, and also some uh, tall R wave and the V6. We have Sokolov, Sokolov criteria to uh, sum of uh, R wave plus S wave is more than 35 uh, millimeter is indicator of left ventricular hypertrophy. But we forget one concept here: this uh, S wave can be possible QS also and QS is not meaning uh, uh, giving the meaning of um, the myocardial infarction as we see here as is very normal left ventricular hypertrophy without myocardial infarction as you see here in lead to uh, three EVF theories and in some leads of lateral VC, VC QF it is due to uh, previously mentioned mechanism of septal hypertrophy change of vic normal vectors and it is not inferior lateral myocardial infarction we should remember that uh, maybe uh, ventricular hypertrophy uh, so especially obstructive cardiomyopathy patient will come with chest pain and should not be uh, mistaken for myocardial infarction as you see here we have q wave and lead to three and avf it is in a WPW syndrome patient uh, that already we have not the history of this patient and this patient uh, will come uh, to you in emergency department and you will put the diagnosis of myocardial infarction but it's not myocardial infarction basically it is negative delta wave showing uh, itself as a yeah, inferior myocardial infarction after returning uh, conversion of the uh, this patient to normal sinus rhythm it will show there wasn't any Q wave in this uh, mentioned uh, leads and it is just due to negative delta wave and left van der branch block we see lacking of any uh, r wave and um, also um, it is showing itself as a qs waves but oh, as we told qs wave is not only indicator of myocardial infarction as we see here it is pattern of left van der branch block with um, 
left anterior fascicular block and it is indicator of left um, bundle branch block without myocardial infarction and in the setting of uh, new onset uh, myocardial infection uh, with uh, presence of left bundle branch block it uh, as another criteria by the name of scarborough criteria that our next uh, season we will tell you about this uh, issue but normally in the left bundle branch block uh, without ST elevation more than the expected criteria of scarborough is not mentioned as a myocardial infarction as you see here it is normal Q qs wave as you see here in a core pulmonary patient we have normally q wave in the inter inferior wall without myocardial infarction of inferior wall. as you see here we have a strain of pressure overload of uh, right side of the heart that is due to right ventricular and right atrium hypertrophy that will produce st segment uh, depression that is normally indicator of posterior wall myocardial infarction but it is not posterior inferior posterior wall myocardial infarction it is normal phenomenon in the core pulmonary patient however some systemic hypoxia will bring uh, ischemic change in this patient but in this patient um, occasion, uh, usually uh, the coronary is intact in the absence of myocardial infarction and these changes are due to uh, physiological change of vectors in, the, in a core pulmonary or COPD patient mm. as we told already uh, the depolarization and repolarization vectors are in the same area any ch uh, changes and that will bring changes in the, the repolarization vectors that is called secondary changes not primary as you see here in this um, electrocardiogram in the left side of the screen and there is chest electrode misplacement they put the uh, normal uh, chest electrodes in a wrong position normally the chest electrodes should be position v1 and v2 in the fourth and dark coastal spaces respectively in the left and right side of the heart but um, by some uh, nurses it is uh, applying mistakenly and putting in the second intercostal spaces and showing qs wave that is uh, well uh, mimicking the myocardial infarction as soon as we see the right side of the screen we put the uh, chest leads in this uh, it's normal places and fourth intercostal spaces we will see the R wave normally that was lacking in the left side of the uh, this image. This is very normal and the chest uh, leads misplacement. We should put and um, have good control about the chest leads and we should monitor it before recording the ECG and interpretation of that. In a summary, we will tell you the left side of this screen. There is a probation of uh, mechanism of uh, the Q wave uh, protection. As you see here, normal variant Q is also possible due to vertical electrical axis and horizontal electrical axis. And um, acute pulmonary embolism, emphysema, and core pulmonary uh, ventricular hypertrophy, either right side, left side, or septal, will produce Q waves. Conduction abnormality, uh, left bundle branch block, left anterior heme block, and WPW syndrome. Replacement of myocardial tissue by electrical silent material like sarcoidosis, myeloidosis, tumor, and infar infarct or scars, and also chest electrode misplacement will produce some Q waves in the respected leads that uh, that are uh, drawn in the right side of the screen. At last, I will tell you this message that um, uh, when you hear the upbeat, thank the horse, not the zebra. Uh, you should clinically match the clinical uh, complaint of patient by as uh, needed complementary diagnostic tools uh, we should not mismatch those things with uh, patient uh, clinics um, otherwise we will uh, go to the wrong and uh, error diagnosis and will produce some problems in our decision about the treatment in the last i am very thankful for afghanistan cardiovascular and cardiology society that i am also founder of this uh, society and working as a leader of academic about the cardiological fields for uh, student doctors specialists and teachers and uh, they are celebrating some courses about the ecg echocardiography and a basic uh, issue in the uh, clinical field of cardiology and we will be ready for next sessions and lectures 
uh, via video by YouTube and other courses inside Afghanistan and we are ready for international conferences also and I am uh, very thankful again thanks for everyone